Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And today's video is going to be all about uh, different types of watercolour painting. So painting wet in wet and wet in dry particularly. So this is part of a series where I'm doing a little bit of chat about watercolour to start with, um, showing you one or two different things, and then we'll use those things in making a pattern. So one of the beautiful things about watercolour is the different type of effects you can get from using your paint in different ways. Uh, the beautiful blends that you can get, the way that colours bleed together, the kind of the interesting runs and things like that, and then how you get deeper and richer colours by layering paint uh, when it's dry. So I'm going to start by showing you just a couple of different uh, methods, getting those different effects, and then we're going to move on and we're going to paint a pattern. And today we are going to paint really simple pattern of like rainbow stripes. You've probably seen these kind of things before if you've been anywhere near Pinterest. Yeah, just some really simple arches. You can do these really big and um, frame them up and they look great in like a kid's room or something like that. So they're a really fun one to do. So let's get on with it. So today I'm going to do my final piece on uh, one sheet of this from this watercolour pad. It's an A4 size. Uh, but I've cut up a few uh, just pieces of cold press cheap watercolour paper just to try things out on. So I've got my set of watercolours, I've got my paper, I've got a medium sized brush, this is a size 7, it's a synthetic brush with a round end, comes to a point, can't see that terribly well, looks more obvious when it's wet, there you go. And I've got a piece of paper towel and a couple of jars of water. So let's mix up some colour to start with and you can choose any colour you like for this. Um, I think I'm going to mix up like a dark greeny blue. And if you want some advice on colour mixing um, you can go and check out my last video which talks all about different colours and how you can get the exact colour that you want from mixing other ones. So when you paint with watercolour paint, you can fill an area like this and then the paint will start to dry. Where there are areas where there's not much paint, so here it dries really quickly, and where there are areas where there's lots and lots of liquid, it can take quite a while, like maybe up to 10 minutes or so. What happens then is you get these lines around the different areas as the paint starts to dry. If you want to get a really even colour, then what you need to do is kind of spread the paint around so that it's evenly spaced in the area. So when this dries, it's going to be a much more even colour than this one here, where I didn't move the paint around, I just put it on. Now I'm going to paint another area here. And then while this paint is still wet, I can add other colours into it. So I can go in with a bit more blue. I can go in with some green. And if I dot those colours around, then as they dry, they'll merge and spread. So I'm going to add a little bit more water into this colour and create another area here that's lighter. So now we've seen how these have dried. So these two have dried quite flat and that's because I kind of spread out the paint over the surface. This one has dried with this really light area here and then lots of kind of ragged edges. That's because I put the paint on and then didn't really move it around after that. And then this one, you can see the green and the blue that I dropped in there while it was still wet have spread out and merged across the surface. It's also quite fun getting um, what they call cauliflowers. I'm sure you'll have seen them. That's where you get these like really kind of wrinkly, kind of hard edges in the middle of your uh, watercolour painting. Now, if you're painting something that you really want to be a smooth, flat surface, then you don't want that at all. But um, if you are painting something that um, 
yeah, if you're painting something that wants a lot of texture, a lot of interest, then they can be really add, interesting to add. So they come from you know, introducing uh, water into areas that are kind of dry. So the water kind of reactivates the pigment and then pushes it out. So you end up with these kind of wiggly edges as the uh, pigment gets pushed out to the side. So you can also introduce them as areas of colour. Uh, if your colour is wetter than the paint around it. So let's let those bleed out and then see what happens. So you can see that you get these amazing kind of interesting textured effects where you drop water into colour. And then this is the one where we dropped uh, kind of wet colour into more colour. And then you get these darker areas where the, uh, the dry paint resists the wet paint from pushing any further. And it's these kind of effects that make watercolour really interesting. But they can also make watercolour painting uh, really quite difficult as well because they can be really hard to control. The more that you experiment and the more that you play with them, the more that you'll be able to anticipate them. And if you want really flat, solid areas of colour, it's really just about spreading the, the wet paint around on the surface so it kind of equally covers the surface. And stretching your paper really helps with that as well. So I'm going to paint three different swatches on here and I'm going to show you the difference um, between mixing paint when it's really wet and mixing it when it's kind of half dry and then mixing it when it's really dry. So let's paint my three swatches on here. And this swatch here is very wet, I've just finished painting it. So I can drop some blue into here and let it spread out and merge. And it should merge quite nicely and you'll get quite a nice kind of mottled effect. Uh, this one I did just a short while ago, um, maybe about 30 seconds to a minute ago. And it started to dry a little bit, it's still kind of damp, but I can go in here with some blue and drop it in, in the same way. And you get more concentrated areas of blue, but you also get some of those cauliflowers. Oops, that in there. This one I'm gonna to leave to dry completely and then I'm gonna drop in the same blue and show you how that looks. So now this one has dried completely I can go in and when I add the blue in here, it just kind of sits on the surface. So here's my swatch and then you see down here, this is where I dropped the uh, the wet paint into the very wet paint. And you can see there's like a, there's like a difference in color across the surface, but there's no hard edges or anything like that. And then this one here, I dropped the wet paint into kind of semi-dry paint. And you can see that you've got all of these little um, funny marks around the edges of those, uh, those areas where you drop the wet paint in. Um, and that can be a really fun thing to play with, uh, but it can also be a bit of a pain if you don't want it in an area. And then this is what happens when you use wet paint on top of completely dry paint. You get kind of really solid um, lines around the edge. Um, and you get kind of you can you can really control your paint like this. So if you're new to watercolor, it's really good to pull out some little bits of paper and have practice sessions like this. Just test swatching different colors and mixing different colors into them, and letting them run and see what happens. Um, adding water into color, color into water, and then different pigments together.
the exercise I'm going to do today is to create some rainbows and I'm going to paint a little grid of rainbows on this page um, and they're going to be very very loose and free and I'm going to incorporate some of the paper texture into them. I'm going to layer the paints wet on wet and then I'm going to layer some of the paints wet on dry as well. I'm just going to mix up some colours that I think are going to be quite fun. Um, you can use any colours you like for this. So I've started out by mixing more of this uh, bluey green colour and I've uh, put more pigment in than water so it's going to be a little bit darker than the ones I did on my swatches here. And I'm going to start just by uh, taking the brush on its side and drawing a long thin arch around the top and back down again. Now I'm going to add a little bit more pigment into this side and bring it back up the top. There we go. And I've managed to smear across there, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to go in and put another arch and then another one in the middle. So using the brush on its side you get lots of the lovely paper texture coming through in the painting and I like that, I want to keep it. So now I'm going to do another arc in the centre of this one. This is still a little bit wet and I've mixed up this kind of dirty pink colour and I'm going to run my brush. I'm going to use it still on slightly an angle but not as much as one as before because I want a thinner line and I'm just going to drag it around the inside of that arc and where the two colours touch they're going to blend a little bit. Where it's already where the blue's already dry, the colour won't blend, but where it where it has, you'll just get a little bit of a blend between those two colours. Right, now I want a third colour for the centre, and I think I want a brighter pink. So I'm gonna mix that in here. And then I'm just going to use the, the tip of my brush for drawing this one. And then if I want the colours to blend a little bit, I can kind of make them touch in a few places. So I think I want this to blend a little bit more into the pink next to it. So I'm just going to go over that again while it's still wet. And you'll see I've got some nice bleeds going on here now. So I'm going to put another one here in the centre of the page and I'm going to uh, just do exactly the same thing but with slightly different colours. So I've mixed up kind of a plummy purple colour, basically mixing the pink that I used here and the blue together and I've added a bit of water into this so it should be a bit lighter and I'm going to do my arc again and a bit more pigment for the second half There we go. Now I do want to add a nice bright blue into the um, centre of this one. So I'm going to take a blue and run it round there. And again you'll see that where the wet paint touches they'll all kind of blend and merge together. I'm just going to add a little bit more water into that same colour um, and go for a third arc there in the centre. For this next one I'm going to do the same but I'm going to start with my pink colour here. A bit more. Drop 
in a bit more pigment in the areas I think need some. I'm going to do my second arc in the middle in a purple. And then I definitely want some more pigment in there. So let's mix a bit more of that in. And a bit more blue for the center one. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little bit more while this outer arc is, well, it's half dry and half wet. So I should get some really interesting effects. And what I'm going to do is just draw some stripes around it with this purple color. So I'm just touching my brush down. There we go. So you see where the pink paint was still really wet, the purple's starting to blend really nicely into it. And then over here where it was really dry, those stripes have stayed much clearer and sharper. So I'm going to continue down the page, adding rainbows. I'm going to do four rows, uh, just like this one. And I'm going to use different combinations of these same colours. So the colours that I'm using are mainly the alizarin crimson and the cobalt blue, and that's making these kind of pinky purple colours. Um, and then I've got a little bit of the Viridian Green uh, in this blue mix to kind of make it more of a tealy blue. I'm also occasionally adding in a little bit of Prussian Blue, which just makes it a little bit darker. So I don't want to do another kind of tealy blue on the outside, but so I might do the purple again. More of a purple. And it, maybe I'll make this one a bit darker. A bit more pigment to water. There we go, right. And then start here and let's draw ourselves a nice big arc. these sometimes somehow the messier they are the better and I'm not naturally a messy painter so this kind of goes against my natural inclination but I do love it.
So now this painting's all dry, you can see this, it's very messy and textured and that's because I was using the brush on its side and because I didn't spend too long um, kind of moving paint around on the page. So you can get a much neater effect if you uh, if you wanted to by kind of making sure your lines were really smooth. But I really like this exercise because of the way the unexpected effects that you get, like these lovely kind of textured marks and the differences between the light and the dark areas. So I want to do a little bit more to this because um, I've added in lots of areas here uh, where the paint was still quite wet or like half wet here. But I want to do the same when it's dried, just to give a little bit of a different effect to some of them. So I'm not going to go overboard. Um, I'm just going to take some of the colour that I've done and do a very similar thing that I did when the paint was wet. So I'm just going to create like a series of dots or stripes around some of these arches just by dabbing the paint in there. And I think we could do is maybe some in here as well. And then I think there is a couple of areas where I just want to, um, I'll maybe add in another little rainbow bit uh, just to give it a bit more oomph. So let's do one up here. And I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush and I'm holding it quite a distance from the top so that I don't have a lot of control here. I'm just going to put in a nice dark blue stripe up there. And then I think maybe a similar one on here as well. Or maybe not. I think a similar one on here. And then I think, yeah, I think a few more dots on this one in a nice purpley colour. And then I think just this one here needs something. So let's go in for the dark blue and let's put the dots around the outside. And I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to do. So uh, I'm all finished now. I've just got to wait for everything to dry. So there we go. There's our fun textured rainbow piece. These are really fun to create. I love the kind of the different textures and the way that the colours all blend together. I really hope you like this and if you give it a go I'd love to see it. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed doing this one. And if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, then subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in another video again very, very soon. Thanks. Bye bye.